Okay, so for people who don't know, understandingthethreat.com, you went undercover for a long time as a Muslim co convert with the Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas, and, and that's what sort of led to your investigative reporting. Give the audience a recap. So in 2007 and 2008, I worked on a project called, uh, we call it the Muslim Mafia Project. Okay. And I ended up uh, spending six straight months undercover uh, with Hamas doing business as care. I posed as a Muslim convert. I'm a Christian, but I posed as a Muslim convert uh, at Dar al-Hijra in uh, Northern Virginia. This was the mosque where Anwar al was the imam prior to me getting there. Uh, okay. He was the moderate voice of Islam until he popped up as an al-Qaeda leader in Yemen. You got into course. CARE before you started working with, with Hamas, because that, that's important because, you know, I'm on CARE's watch list for people who don't know. They're one of the biggest Muslim nonprofit organizations. In the U.S., U.S. In the U.S. I don't know. And uh, I'm on their watch list. So you did get into CARE first. When I say CARE, I might as well say Hamas. I, I use those words interchangeably because okay. CARE is a Hamas organization. Uh, factually, per evidence, it's not just my opinion. Uh, per the largest terrorism financing and Hamas trial in U.S. history, the Holy Land Foundation trial, CARE was identified by the Department of Justice as a Hamas organization. So that's not an opinion. That's just a, a blatant fact. So I ended up pulling 12,000 pages of documents, preserving them as evidence, uh, showing them that they were involved in fraud, uh, political influence operations on Capitol Hill. And so when you see so many legislators that have policies that are favorable towards the Muslim Brotherhood, or care specifically, it's because they work political influence operations day in and day out right from their DC offices. Let's explain this for people who may not necessarily know. Why is that uh, a problem? A lot of them just think, well, Hamas does some unsavory stuff, but again, they're under the thumb of Israel, so they're fighting oppressors. Muslim Brotherhood. What are some of the problems with the Muslim Brotherhood in the context that an American organization would be supporting them? The main problem with the Muslim Brotherhood, as I've testified from the US Senate, is that they have the exact same Per their own documents and per their own bylaws, they have the exact same agenda as al-Qaeda in the Islamic State. So Sounds when you bad. hear the term Muslim Brotherhood, they have the exact same goal and agenda as, uh, as the Islamic State or al-Qaeda. And as far as CARE specifically or Hamas, Hamas is a designated foreign terrorist organization. That should end the discussion right there. I mean, this is a terrorist organization per the Department of State. So uh, not good people. If they're a terrorist organization, how is CARE allowed to be on Capitol Hill directly funding and supporting them? Ah, uh, the million dollar question. <laughs> There's enough evidence right now to indict CARE for material support of terrorism, right now. Yeah. Uh, you remember the timeline of the Holy Land Foundation trial. This trial was adjudicated in 2008, and the largest Islamic charity in the United States at the time it was indicted, the Holy Land Foundation, was funneling millions of money to a foreign designated terrorist organization, Hamas. Yeah. So. You've got uh, CARE was on the unindicted list and remains on the unindicted list to this day. But think about the timeline. It's adjudicated in late 2008. Obama takes over in January of 2009. Uh, all the investigators that were ready to indict the unindicted co-conspirators in that investigation were told to shut the investigation down by Eric Holder and they remain on the unindicted co-conspirator list to this day. Well, and here's something that I, I want to uh just to clarify for people out there, a lot of people will say, well, see that, he's a secret Muslim. I've never believed that Barack Obama's a secret Muslim. The guy absolutely wanted to appease the, it's, it's a sacrifice at the altar of political correctness, and he didn't want to be seen as Islamophobic at that time. I don't think it matters. No. I mean, I've never thought that it mattered whether or not Obama was a Muslim. The, from Wait, a Muslim Brotherhood gay. perspective, they, <laughs> the Muslim Brotherhood couldn't have asked for a better candidate. Yeah. And, and, Better, better president. So it doesn't matter if he's a Muslim or a Marxist. The bottom line, he was definitely uh, not working on behalf of the republic. You mentioned Marxists. So the left, politi the politically correct sort of DNC establishment. I don't just mean social justice warriors on campus. I mean Bernie Sanders. I mean Hillary Clinton. I mean Elizabeth Warren. Take your pick. Nancy Pelosi. They all link I hate arms. all of those names. Yes, I do not like any of those names. They all link arms with Islam because they see it as a persecuted class of the day. But of course, Islam, the religion and the political philosophy goes against everything they would claim to stand for, whether it's gay rights, women's rights. Why is that? Why are people in D.C., people in the government, who know that this was an officially recognized terrorist organization like Hamas, why are they so sympathetic to people who would throw them off a roof? We actually have a term for that. It's called the red-green axis, hard left Marxist socialists working with the jihadi groups. On the surface, their goals are antithetical, right? Right. And yet, from the Marcus, Marxist perspective, what do they want to do? Uh, think Saul Alinsky rules for radicals. You create chaos so that you can, out of that chaos, have a revolution. 
Now, and their goal is to have a Marxist utopian revolution. The jihadis want to create chaos and then have a revolution. Out of that revolution, they want to create an Islamic state under Sharia. Where these two groups agree is that you need to create chaos and you need to have a revolution. And that's why they're working together. They're both just looking to create chaos as a means to their end. And maybe they haven't necessarily realized yet that the end is very different for both of them. They're both useful idiots to each other. Yeah, and they actually think that they're that they are using each other. I would argue that the uh, the leftists and the snowflakes have absolutely no shot at victory uh, going up <laughs> the jihadi groups. But you know, they seem to think that they're using each other for right now. So, so, well. so you believe this is more? They're creating chaos. It's part of an overarching plan. Is it possible? I mean, a, a big part of me just thinks, you know, political correctness obviously is is. It's, it's situational ethics. It's a worldview completely devoid of principles, political correctness. That's why now we say people of color, whereas colored people is racist. It's, it's never even remotely consistent. Do you, I, I, do you think that m maybe um, it's just that so many people are blinded by political correctness and seeing the threat that is Islam? Or you think the controllers, the people we mentioned, the actual elites, they know they just don't care? But the rest of the folks are maybe blinded, maybe uh, uneducated. The average American, the patriotic American, American at a gut level understands that Islam is the problem. There's not a situational awareness, uh, a deep understanding of Islam and Sharia by the average person to really identify that there's no peaceful, moderate, alternative, kinder, gentler version of Islam. There's only Islam. And I don't think that we're there yet where the average person understands that there isn't a moderate Islam, a radical Islam, an extremist Islam. From an Islamic perspective, there is only Islam, and all Islam calls for jihad until the entire planet's under Sharia. Let me ask you this. Obviously, in the spirit of kind of challenging you, they would say, well, if, you, if that's true, what about all the moderate Muslims in the United States who aren't committing any violence, who don't support this? There are plenty of uh, people that self-identify as Muslim, but they don't want to adhere to Sharia. The problem is there are plenty of Muslims that, while they're not actually out there waiting Aging physical jihad. From a Sharia perspective, jihad is total warfare, political influence operations, espionage, uh, getting on care, getting on television, defending jihad statements by sure. Linda Sarsour um, after the San Bernardino attacks, getting on television, uh, defending uh, the jihadis or their families. So this is total warfare, media propaganda, uh, media manipulation. Even Muslims that go to the mosque every Friday and pay what's called zakat, one eighth of all of their zakat, which is a giving that they do, annual giving, goes towards jihad. Yeah. So a Muslim doesn't have to go out there and shoot somebody in the street or blow something up to not be supporting the jihad. No, that, that's a good that's a good point to make. It's an important delineation because I've said this. It is a there's a jihad against free speech. When I'm mm -hmm. I'm told, well, you know what, you can't paint Muhammad as Bob Ross. When someone says you can't paint this, and they try to create different rules in a free Westernized society for their little enclave. Now I understand if they say you can't attack someone for his name being Muhammad. Of course, but when only one sect, when only Muslims are saying you have to play by our rules, and this is a majority of Muslims saying you cannot yeah. draw our profit. That is a jihad against my personal freedoms. And I would say that anomalies tend to be more of your Lindsay Lohan brand of Islam. Yes, yes, yeah, exactly. Fashionable for a week and then move on. Do you sure. think that there is a, a proactive jihad against freedom of speech in the West? It, it's not just jihad. That when, when we talk about people being afraid to speak out about Islam, that is the imposition of the Islamic law of slander. That is already uh, doctrinally a, a, a core element of Islam uh, that you do not speak out negatively about Islam. And yeah. so we are implementing the Islamic law of slander in the West on ourselves, particularly in, in uh, countries in Europe that are actually, like you said, people are going to jail or they're being fined or they're being arrested for simply speaking up about Islam. That's the imposition of the Islamic law of slander. It starts there, it ends with total warfare until there's an Islamic state. And we've seen that for the last 1400 years. This is nothing new. They don't seem to have any qualms with actually the Islamic view of slander is anyone who speaks negatively about the prophet, period. That's not allowed. No, it's not. And, it, and it's a capital crime against us in Islam. Look, there's a lot of, uh, the more you know about Sharia, the worse it gets. And there's a lot of capital crimes in yeah. Sharia. Like Pakistan. Uh, slandering the prophet, prophet is one of them. Right. That's the progression. Everywhere we have a Muslim population, the progression and the goal within that community is always to move that society along until there is total subjugation under Sharia. It's the goal of all the jihadi groups. It's the goal of every Islamic community 
all over the planet. And they're on different paths and different stages along that, but that's always the goal. I mean, look, from a Muslim perspective, everyone is born a Muslim. All the prophets of the Old Testament, Abraham, um, uh, David, I mean, um, all of the prophets were all, Moses were all Muslims. It was, and Jesus was a Muslim. It was the corrupt and filthy Jews from, from their own words, Islamic scholars' own words, and the priests that corrupted these texts. And that's why Muhammad had to come and restore, restore the truth. Look, it's, it's all blasphemy, but again, there's no law in Christianity that I'm aware of as a Christian that says that, that we need to kill people that, uh, that blaspheme against it. And yet that is codified in authoritative Sharia that anybody that blasphemes Muhammad or blasphemes Islam or Allah should be killed. You brought up moderate Muslims earlier. There are a lot of Muslims that don't want to live under Sharia, but you're bringing down literally a death sentence to yourself or your family if you come out and speak about it. Right. For a Muslim to come out and say that, let's just say a Muslim converts to Christianity, and then they come out and speak about that, well, they've committed apostasy, and either themselves, they are uh, in danger, sure. or their families back at home, if they have ha families overseas, they're in danger. So there's a lot of Muslims that, uh, that just don't want to talk about it. They're Muslim in name only, but they don't want to live under Sharia. The problem is, from a national security perspective, I would challenge anyone, how can you tell the difference? In other words, if Islamic law obliges Muslims to lie in order to further and advance the jihad, I've been at this for over 10 years, and if I can't tell the difference between somebody that adheres to Shariahs or somebody that um, says they're Muslim and somebody that's a jihadi, yeah. just be based off their words. I can if I start asking questions and I start learning more about their background, but not just on the surface. Right, and the difference is, is a little more drastic than, let's say, someone who says they're a Christian, but they're actually a Westboro Baptist with 14 members, and uh, they're going to be annoying and put a God hates flag signs outside of a, a soldier's funeral, which, you know, I love to see them get their ass kicked, any good American does. Big difference from blowing people up. And by the way, uh, yeah, just to fact check, you were correct. There is no law in Christianity saying to kill anyone who blasphemes. That's okay. a big notable difference between the history of Christianity versus Islam. Early Christians yeah. were killed for professing their love for Christ. Early Muslims killed people for professing criticism of Muhammad. That's yeah. how the faith spread. Uh, final question, what is it going to take? Most Americans just don't believe it. They're gonna watch this interview, say it's fear-mongering, what needs to happen to shake the United States, to shake Western civilization from their, from their politically correct funk so that they can't see this? Acknowledging that we're in a 1,400-year war and we can look to Europe right now. We are literally watching the collapse of Europe right now. Uh, the UK, it's our assessment and understanding the threat that the United Kingdom, short of a miracle, will become an Islamic state. Belgium will become an Islamic state, short of a miracle. Uh, just watch what's going on in Europe. We are only a few years behind that. People see all the attacks in Europe, they know right. it still hasn't woken them up. Well, all I can say is the more you know about Islam, the more you know about Sharia, the more you realize that this is something that's been raging for 1,400 years. Uh, the Middle East was not always an Islamic uh, 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 area. It was uh, certainly not, it was uh, a lot of areas were Christian, yeah. totally overthrown, totally conquered by jihadis. Uh, this is nothing new. Yeah. Uh, all, the only thing that's new is that there is a lot of oil money funding the jihad now where there wasn't oil money funding the jihad back then. And that's why uh, I'm a fan of the Keystone Pipeline. Send them back to their caves, I say. Hey, if you like this video, subscribe by clicking the button that says subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you should subscribe anyway, because then you can watch the next video. And what you can do is downvote it and leave a comment that's really negative, you know, particularly if it's something like, I don't know, maybe anti-Semitic, even though I'm not Jewish, or something about my hair, or something about my weird nose. Just leave a really negative comment so that everyone else around can act like they care.